Replacing joysticks in the DualSense controllers can be a bit problematic. The new joystick is not going to be identical to the old joystick, so the controller's calibration is going to be off. Off just a little and the controller will be usable. Probably not perfect, but usable. Off a lot, well, probably have to change out the joystick again. But those problems may be all in the past now, as it looks like software to calibrate the controller is now available. When you go to this web page, dualshock-tools.github.io, it may not look like anything fancy, but what it does is solve a long-standing problem with replacing the joysticks in a DualSense controller, or a DualShock controller for that matter, as it does seem to work for both. The creator of this software, the underscore Al, has released it as open source, which is very commendable. I can see this program helping hundreds of thousands of people in the years to come. A very big thanks to the underscore Al for all the hard work. To calibrate the controllers, I will be using this website along with the Gamepad Tester website at hardwaretester.com slash gamepad. So let's get to calibrating. This controller has the original right joystick and a replaced left joystick. The originals were ALPS and the replacement was an ALPS. I believe this controller had the shortest life of any we have had. I think it was right at four months old when it started acting up. First thing to notice here is that for the replaced joystick, the left one, it is a bit off center. Left and right are great, up and down are pretty bad, bad enough to cause some problems. And centering on the original stick, the right one, is quite good. Now the circularity of the joysticks in this controller is a bit odd. The left joystick is not horrible, especially for a replaced joystick. The right joystick seems pretty bad for an original joystick, at least the ones I've tried. I believe this means the joysticks in this controller have worn very badly, one bad enough to need replacing. Let me fire up the DualShock calibration page. When you first open the page, a welcome screen gives a bit of information and warnings. I believe the two most important items on the list are make sure the controller is well charged and do a temporary calibration first to make sure there are no errors. This program does seem to update non-volatile memory in the controller, and if something goes wrong, well, the only fix may be a new controller. So I guess the use at your own risk entry in the list is important as well. At this point, I would only have one controller connected to the computer, then can click on the connect button. The first time connecting to the controller, it will bring up a list of controllers, which I think to be safe should be a list of one controller. Select that controller and click connect. If there are no errors, it should look something like this. The firmware date for this controller is January 29th, 2024. I believe that is the latest. At least the PS5 hasn't wanted to update it. And the PC board in this controller is model BDM-020, which I know is correct. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a temporary stick center calibration. Can see the right changes permanently checkbox is unchecked. Then I click start. I'll move both sticks to the top left and then let them snap back to the center. Then click continue. Then move both sticks to the top right and release. Click continue. Now both sticks are moved to the bottom left and then released. Click continue. And finally I'll move both sticks to the bottom right and then let them return to the center. Then click continue. At this point if no errors occurred it will display sampling then storing calibration, and finally the completed page with the done button. I'll click done and the stick center is calibrated. Now I'll click the calibrate stick range temporary button. A window pops up and says the controller is now sampling data. I'll move both sticks around in a circle at their full extent. I'll slowly do three rotations in one direction and then I'll do three rotations in the opposite direction. No doubt overkill, but why not? Then I'll click done. If everything went okay, should get a pop-up saying so. Now I'll disconnect the program from the controller with the disconnect button. Now to the gamepad tester webpage. 
we'll need to press a button on the controller to start it. I'll move the sticks around a bit. Can see that has fixed the very bad up down centering on the left stick. Left right might be a tad worse. It may be that instead of letting the stick snap back, it might be better to let it gently move back to the center. Now for the circularity test. Can see what a huge difference it makes. It's like the controller is new. Now here's the temporary part of what was just done. While it calibrated the controller, the information was not stored in the controller's non-volatile memory. So when it's powered down, and then powered back up, I end up with this. The left stick is back to its off-centered state, like nothing was done to it. And the circularity is back to left and right sticks being not so great. I'll close down the gamepad tester page. Don't want it trying to read anything from the controller. And I'll go back to the DualShock calibration page. Then click connect and I should see the same info I saw a few minutes ago. I'll click the calibrate stick center button. But this time I will check the right changes permanently checkbox. Click start. And then the same process as last time. Each corner and back to the center. Then move to the next position until done. Now I'll click the calibrate stick range permanent button. Again it brings up a window saying the controller is now sampling data. I'll rotate both sticks just like I did the last time. Three slow rotations in each direction at the full extent of the joystick and if all went well should get a range calibration complete pop-up. Again I will disconnect the program from the controller and start up the gamepad tester web page. Check the centering. Looks the same as it did last time so very good. Then the circularity, again about the same as last time, so very very good. But now when I power down the controller, and then power it back up, all the calibration is still there. It has been stored into the non-volatile memory of the controller. The controller has been calibrated. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, it's a beautiful day, a long awaited day. But there are some caveats. Here is a controller that has had the left stick replaced with a Hall Effect joystick. The right stick is the original joystick, an Alps. The original left joystick's up down axis center position was so far off from electrical center that the Hall joystick had to be mechanically centered quite a bit. Can see the center positions are just fine. But the circularity of the left stick is shifted in the up down axis quite a bit. I have already run through the temporary calibration and there were no errors. I know it may seem like a waste of time to do the temporary calibration, but this is very new software, so I think it is a good idea. I'll do the stick center calibration with the right changes permanently box checked. and then a permanent range calibration. I'm not sure permanent is a good word to use here. Can redo the range calibration, so it's not permanent permanent. But I guess it's a better button name than calibrate stick range, non-volatile memory write enabled. So back to the gamepad tester page. Of course centering was fine before. Can see circularity has improved quite a bit but the left stick is still shifted in the up down axis. So I need to take this controller back apart and undo the mechanical centering I did to the joystick. This will probably be the case with any add on boards that help to center a joystick or any of the mechanical centering that was done to achieve a centered output. I believe it will be especially important for a Hall Effect joystick to have the magnet at its center position when the joystick is in its centered position. That will have to be a video of its own. Here's another controller where the left joystick has been replaced with a Hall Effect joystick. And again the right stick is the original. Really starting to get a pattern here. It's very hard to see in the video, but the right joystick will max out before it gets to its mechanical limit. It's not bad when using the controller, but it is something that is very noticeable in the gamepad tester. 
whereas the right stick basically hits maximum value at its mechanical limit, like it should. Again, I really don't notice it in playing with the controller, but that does mean the left stick would be a bit more sensitive than it normally would be. Here is the circularity. Left stick is quite bad. But while bad, it is kind of centered. I guess this could be a problem in certain games though. So I'll connect to the DualShock calibration page. Not going to go through the whole process again. I just want to note that the board model for this controller is BDM-010. This is the only controller I have with this model board. I don't have a controller with the BDM-030 board, so I can't say for sure how well this works for those models, though I would expect it to work just fine. No errors, so should be good to go. I haven't had any errors using this software, haven't used it a ton, maybe 20 to 25 times between the DualShock I started testing with and the DualSense controllers. Wow, that completely fixed the range problem. Yeah, it's maxing out at the mechanical limit now. Very nice. Let me check the circularity. Again, wow, what a difference. The circularity looks as good as a standard potentiometer-based joystick, and maybe a little better than an old worn potentiometer-based joystick. I'm very pleased with that. I run Linux, and the GamePad tester page runs fine with the out-of-the-box UDEV rules. But the DualShock calibration page will not. When you try to connect to the device, you will get an error. For OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, I added this UDEV rule. Worked, but I have very little experience with UDEV rules, so use at your own risk and that sort of thing. For Ubuntu Studio, I added this rule. Now, I do believe that mode could be 0660 for this, but I haven't tried. It worked and I didn't go back. Now, with this software, I really don't see myself using another potentiometer-based joystick in a DualSense controller. I know some will want the fastest response time possible, so that will require going with the potentiometer-based joysticks, but I'll be okay with a few millisecond delay if I don't have to worry about working on the controller in six months. A good trade-off, I would say. If you are interested in how this calibration software works and came to be, the underscore owl has a blog at blog.the.owl. It's a very interesting read. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And again, a very big thanks to the underscore owl.